Let's talk about bone. In Finland, bone seems to be a big issue. And I think this is a perception issue because when you talk to people at home in the UK, they may mention bone, but a bone is not their prime concern. The two things that people do talk about with, with bony material are bones, bones to chew. We call these recreational, recreational bones. Recreational, recreational bones, i.e., these are bones that you, that you, uh, that they're usually bigger bones, and that you, they take some time to chew, uh, and they 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 do two, if not more things. They clean your teeth as you're eating them. I say you, I mean dogs, yeah, and actually, you and your dog are pretty much the same thing. Okay, so as, you, as, as our canine friends chew through bones, they clean their teeth. Mother Nature has created this system where it is a self-cleaning system, which is pretty sensible if you think about it. Okay, so they, will, they clean their teeth. Th that material will go down into their gut and will form the fiber, yeah? You and I, as, as omnivores, will eat nuts and maybe some grasses and some grains and roots and things like this uh, back in the old days. Nowadays, we have all bran in the morning, yeah, for fiber, okay? But dogs use bony material for fiber. It's important in forming stool, okay? And some people can be, can get worried that when they eat meat that has uh, bone particles within it, they're worried that they will, that, that the dog will get clogged up, yeah, silted up like a sandy river. It gets silted up, okay? This is a, a very rare problem. And the, the time that I see it the most is in puppies, okay? If we get time, we're going to talk about puppies. What people will do is the, the uh, puppy will come to them at about eight weeks and will have been on a uh, some kibble diet, very typically, okay? The, uh, the new puppy owner will either have had a dog who was fed raw and they are getting another dog to feed raw, or they are new to having puppies and they've just, they've thought, right, I eat a very healthy species appropriate diet, so I'm going to feed the dog a healthy species appropriate diet. So they start the dog on a, on a raw food diet, which has a, has a, five to ten percent bone contingent bone composition within it and quite often the digestive process the microbiome of those puppies ha takes a while to get used to the bone that they've just got exposed to and so they can get a bit silted up Okay, that's the classic situation when a dog, typically a puppy, but can be older, is first brought onto, onto a, a, a raw food diet with bone in it. And the answer to that is add some vegetables or some fiber of some sort, maybe some psyllium gel, in order to kind of fluff up that bony material so that it can be passed out. That's usually Will, will help. You can also just reduce. If you're feeding 10% bony material, you, you, you either dilute the 10% down to 5% or you find a food that, that feeds a 5%. And most dogs will not get uh, clogged at all on a 5%, okay? 10% is normal and most dogs are okay. 5% you're really pretty safe on a 5% bone, okay? Obviously, if you've got somebody who says, I don't want any bone in my food whatsoever, then put them on a non-bone product, allow the gut to settle, and then you might wean onto a product that has a small amount of particulate bone within it, okay? It can be done, it's done all the, all the time. Like I say, there's a million dogs in the UK who are eating raw, raw food right now, and they are mainly on five to 10% bony, bony material. Problems, very, very, very few. Okay, so bone, uh, uh, chewing bones, 
very rarely get problems. Bone particles within a within a within a diet, very few problems as well. So that's one of that's the, uh, another one of these um, uh, the, the the big questions which we have done. I'm just going to check my time so that we're uh, we're on time.